to Community UU Church Online. I'm Sarah Riling, one of the worship associates. We are glad that you're here with us today. Whether you're a member, a new or longtime visitor, or you just found this video on YouTube, may you find connection with us and food for your mind and spirit. Pastor Chris Cervantes is on study leave for the month of July. Our guest speaker today is Matthew Pargeter Villarreal. Matthew is a Master's of Divinity graduate from Bright Divinity School with a concentration in sexual and gender justice, a candidate for the ministry with the UUA and the incoming intern minister at First Unitarian Church in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Matthew also served as a chaplain at Baylor All Saints Medical Center in Fort Worth, Texas. He currently lives in Albuquerque with his husband, Gabriel, and their 10-year-old calico named Juliet. Matthew will share with us today the magic of unicorns and glimpses of the divine on the spiritual path. Our opening words are entitled Transfiguring Love by Chip Rausch. Deeper than DNA, more fundamental than molecules or quarks, at our living core, we are wholeness and transfiguring love. We often forget that power, becoming lonely or resentful, comparing ourselves to others, acting out of our fears rather than living our glory. Occasionally, we rouse from our trance to remember our wholeness. For a time, we embody unsentimental love. We make efforts to wake others and to remain fully present ourselves. Our lives and our time here together are made sacred by our striving. For the remainder of our time together and for the rest of our lives, may we be more aware of the spirit of life evolving through and among us. So may we be. Hold me close 
This church, like all Unitarian Universalist churches, is not bound by a creed. We are not required to make an affirmation of faith or belief. Unitarian Universalism is a covenantal religion and each church develops its own covenant. Our covenant is about the ways we promise to be in relationship with each other and the wider community. We recommit ourselves to these promises each time we recite this church's covenant. Please join me as once again we say together, love is the spirit of this church and service is its law. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth and freedom and to help one another. Now let us sing, sing to the sing, Bible, sing, sing, sing. Sing, 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 lift up your voice, be not afraid. Now let us sing to the power of the faith with Now let us sing, 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 sing. Now let us sing, 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 sing. Lift up your voice, be not afraid. Now let us sing to the power of the hope with Now let us sing. Sing, 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 now let us sing, 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 lift up your voice, be not afraid, now let us sing to the power of the love with now let us sing, 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 now let us sing, 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 lift up your voice, be not afraid, now let us sing to the of the spiritual community is sharing our happiness and our burdens. Please use this chat feature to share what is on your heart today with us. Spirit of love and life, be with us in our joys, milestones, and sorrows. Help us to be compassionate to ourselves and to each other. May we be the peaceful, calm presence that is needed in the world as we work for justice for all.
So I am about to do something that has not been done in most Unitarian or Universalist spaces in perhaps the past 50 to 100 years. I am going to read a passage from the King James Version of the Bible. Now, before you scramble to click leave meeting or the X in the top right hand corner of the screen, I invite you to humor me as I think you will see very early on that there is method to my madness. This is chapter 24 of the book of Numbers, verses 8 and 9. God brought him forth out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of an unicorn. He shall eat up the nations his enemies, and shall break their bones, and pierce them through with his arrows. He couched, he lay down as a lion, and as a great lion, who shall stir him up? Blessed is he that blesseth thee, and cursed is he that curseth thee. Several years ago, when I was serving as an intern at the Welcome Table Christian Church in Arlington, Texas, I got the opportunity to take part in an unusual tradition that had begun the summer before when I arrived at the church. Instead of the usual sermon series that the church did every month, the minister invited the congregation to text or email suggestions for different Bible passages and topics to preach on, inviting them to give feedback on what they wanted to hear. My immediate response was to pull out my phone in the middle of the service and text him with my vote for the topic of unicorns in the Bible. The first time that I texted that suggestion to him, it was meant mostly as a joke. I could imagine the minister responding back with a response along the lines of, why am I not surprised that you would say something like that? But the second time that he asked the congregation for sermon suggestions, I texted him the same topic. But this time I was very much serious. I looked up to that minister not just as a supervisor, but as a mentor as well. I was interested to see what he would do with that kind of challenge, and I wanted to see the sermon that would result. But, alas, the unicorn sermon never materialized. And then, the minister went out of town and entrusted the pulpit to his ready and willing intern minister. It was at that point that I figured if it is a sermon about unicorns that I wanted, it was a sermon about unicorns that I was going to have to preach for myself. So brace yourselves, beautiful people. This is my unicorn sermon. It is admittedly a stretch to spend an entire sermon talking about unicorns in the Bible. The word unicorn appears nine times in the Bible, like in Numbers 24, 8, mostly in the Hebrew Bible and only in the King James Version, which was completed in 1611. Most biblical scholars will tell you that this is the result of a translation error. Numbers forms one of the five books of the Torah, the sacred text of Judaism, so it was originally written in Hebrew. The Hebrew word in Numbers 24.8 is re'em, which is a word that Western European biblical translators were completely unfamiliar with, but they were fairly sure it was some type of large, strong animal. Whenever the translators for the King James Version of the Bible encountered a Hebrew word that they did not recognize, they would cross-reference that word with the Septuagint, a complete Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible that was readily available at the time, to see what the corresponding Greek word would have been in order to base their English translation off of that. The Greek word for re'em was monokeros, which literally translates to one horn. Based on this, the translators for the King James Version decided that the most relevant word for their English translation was unicorn. 
Now, it may seem unusual now, based on the images of unicorns that we have today, but the concept of unicorns would have been very familiar to Western European society during the Renaissance. The Greek historian of the 5th century BC, Theseus, recounted stories that he had heard while traveling in Persia about an animal that resembled a wild ass with a horn that was, quote, one of the strongest of all creatures. It defends itself with its horn, teeth, and hooves, and slays many horses and men. The Chinese prom prominently featured a unicorn-like creature in their mythology called a Qi Lin, which had the front half of a horse with a single horn, and the back half of a dragon or fish, sort of a unicorn-mermaid hybrid, if you will, before it was on trend. It was said to be a symbol of luck, good omens, protection, prosperity, success, and longevity. The animal found its way into Buddhist and Taoist cosmology, being seen as gentle and benevolent creatures who floated upon the clouds, but would become enraged if there were evil forces that threatened the human realm, often spitting fire and showing several different powers that varied from story to story. Although there was no physical proof that such a creature existed, further mentions of it by Aristotle and Pliny the Elder meant that the unicorn was entered into the Physiologus, a Greek zoological text that was a reference to all the many creatures that existed in the world. The unicorn was the perfect way to describe the powerful horned creature from the early Hebrew translations, but because the unicorn was also associated with being a representation of the divine, it was also associated as a symbol of innocence, purity, and self-sacrifice. In a sense, the unicorn came to become an anthropomorphic representation of the multifaceted nature of God, powerful, strong, and able to defend itself, but also majestic, loving, and gentle. It became a popular symbol for knights to put on their shields, banners, and coats of arms, eventually becoming a symbol of Scotland and the Scottish kings in the process. Today, most biblical scholars will tell you that the re'em that the Hebrew text was referring to was an aurochs, a huge and now extinct ox-like creature. The new revised standard version, the biblical translation that my Disciples of Christ seminary prefers, like most other later translations, replaces the phrase with wild ox, thereby erasing the unicorn from its presence in scripture. But even though my love of unicorns causes me to be somewhat biased, I believe that this substitution does not do the spirit of the text justice. I cannot tell you when my love affair with unicorns began. It is not something that I have carried with me since childhood. I certainly liked unicorns before, but it has not been until very recently that it has turned into the obsession that it has become. I'm sure that the word unicorn entered my vocabulary somewhere around 2011 after watching an episode of the television show Glee entitled I Am Unicorn. In the episode, the character of Kurt, an openly gay teenager, is struggling with the perception that people have of him being too feminine, and he worries that it will hold him back, especially as far as getting leading male roles within the musical theater department. To try and offer up a change of image, he decides to run in the upcoming elections for student class president and to try and project a more masculine persona. He enlists the help of Brittany S. Pierce, a fellow member of the Glee Club, to help him out as his campaign manager, but is shocked when the next day at school she posts a giant poster of him riding on the back of a unicorn and galloping across a rainbow underneath the slogan, Believe in Magic, Believe in Kurt Hummel. When Kurt angrily confronts her about the banner, she replies with the iconic quote, a unicorn is someone who knows they are magical and isn't afraid to show it. Eventually, the episode ends happily with Kurt learning to be more confident in the own unique person that he is. As a young queer adult watching that episode, 
I resonated with the issues of self-esteem and self-doubt that the character of Kurt had to encounter, as they were all issues that I had to tackle myself through my own coming out process. Just like Kurt, I wondered whether people would see me for who I was beyond just my sexual orientation, and I had to learn to live into the unique person I am that is sitting before you today. Brittany's quote about unicorns also mentions another and perhaps the most important aspect of the unicorn that I have not yet touched upon, confidence. Whether depicted as pink and glittery, or whether it is displayed emblazoned on the shield of a knight, the unicorn is still able to stand tall and stand proudly in its own skin. It combines both its powerful aspects and its gentle romantic ones into one beast that refuses to be invisible. In this respect, I feel that it is completely right to be, for God to be seen as a unicorn within this passage of Numbers. For me, God does have the strength of a unicorn. Amid the most insurmountable of odds, when you do not know how things will turn out, and when there are people who look to curse you and to bring you down, the universe has a way of bringing a resolution out of any lost and hopeless cause. And just like the unicorn who still stands majestically above all, it allows you to put your trust in something and find hope that could still be there for you as a source of comfort in your hour of darkness. It may seem fantastical as a 34-year-old candidate for ministry to continue to be obsessed with a mythical horned creature that may or may not have existed. It is even more fantastical that, in the prime of your ministerial career, when you are supposed to be at your most professional, to have the image of that mythical horned creature covering every notebook, pen, pencil, notepad, and various other office supplies. My response to all the critics and naysayers out there is this. Just because something may be from out of a fairy tale does not mean that there is not truth in it and that it does not have something important to say about the greater world that we live in. I take particular inspiration in a quote I recently found from popular theologian Nadia Boltz Weber. I need a God who is bigger and more nimble and mysterious than what I could understand and contrive. Otherwise, it can feel like I am worshiping nothing more than my own ability to understand the divine. For me, the magic and the mystery that I find in unicorns helps to remind me of the mystery and wonder that I find when I relate to the divine through my own spiritual practice. I cannot expect that you will leave today feeling the exact same way about unicorns as I do, and that was not the intention of the sermon in any way, shape, or form. But if I have anything to leave you with, it is that I encourage you to go out into the world and not be afraid of finding magic in it. The world needs more of the magic and mystery that reminds us of the power and wonder that we find the divine at work in the greater world that we inhabit. Maybe so, blessed be, amen, shalom, assalamu alaikum, namaste. Thank you all very much. Sometimes I'm right and I can be wrong. My own beliefs are in my songs. Butcher the bacon, the drummer, and then makes no difference what group I'm in. <laughs>
Our wish at Community UU Church is to cultivate a spirit of gratitude and generosity in all things. As we are grateful for the many gifts we have been given, the natural outwelling of this gratitude is generosity. May you know the grace of gratitude and the generosity of spirit that giving brings. If you wish to support Community UU Church and its ministries by your giving, you can mail a check to our church building. The address is on our church webpage, communityuuchurch.org. Or you can go to the webpage and click on the blue Donate Now button to donate by credit or debit card. Thank you for your generous gifts. Our time together today is ending, and as is our custom, we will extinguish our chalice. Please say the words together with me. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Our benediction is entitled Revel in the Mystery by Ali Bell Delgado. May we find the courage to revel in the experience of the mystery. May we approach the unknown with excitement, even if we can only muster a tiny bit. May we celebrate the curiosity that leads to searching, and may we meet ourselves along the way and love us unapologetically. Amen. Our service is ended, but your service has just begun. Go in peace, go in joy, go in love. Blessed be.